Good evening on my behalf. It's a great uh, pleasure and privilege to, to be here and present briefly United Bankers PLC. Thank you, Indres, for, for the opportunity. Uh, my name is uh, Patrick Anderson, CEO of United Bankers and uh, fourth biggest uh, shareholder. My uh, own background is, is on the islands between Finland and Sweden, where we have uh, cultivated land and, and forest for, for several generations. Uh, and at UB, I've been active for the last 24 years. Uh, last 17 of these as, as CEO. So really excited about the growth and, and transformation we have behind us and ahead of us. I'm going to talk very briefly about who we are, who we are what we do, uh, about our uh, growth strategy and about the company as, as a listed investment. First of all, we're one of the oldest uh, Nordic uh, asset managers. AUM-wise, we are a mid-sized player. 4.6 billion euros was the AUM in, in end of June. We've been listed on the Helsinki Stock Exchange uh, since 2014, first on uh, first North and then during the last three years on, on, on the main list. We are a team of roughly 200 persons and our core business is really managing alternative funds. The total amount of funds currently is 25. And uh, worth mentioning, uh, among other things, we are currently the third biggest uh, private forest owner in Finland. And as you, most of you know, Finland is more or less only forest. So uh, third biggest meaning at, at this point, roughly uh, slightly bigger than the, the uh, island group of Åland is, is the forest we are managing currently. We have a long history behind uh, and the company has undergone several transformations during the way. We started in 1986 as a stockbroker. Uh, the picture on the, on the left there is from the uh, uh, stock exchange in Helsinki where, where we had a desk like, like the other ones back then. Uh, during the 90s we built up alongside the stock brokerage a, a high net driven uh, wealth management. During years 2000 to 2015 we broadened the spectrum to, to uh, mutual funds, focused and sh uh, focus shifting more and more to institutions and focus shifting more and more to alternatives. And uh, at this, this point in time, a big majority of our business uh, comes from alternatives that I will describe to you shortly. Uh, key for any success in this business is, is the team. I'm really happy and proud about the team I have currently. The, the uh, core of the team is the same that I started with 24 years ago. And uh, of course, as the business has developed, uh, the team has strengthened significantly, being now roughly 200 professionals. We, as a team, hold 56% of the, the company, so we're actually kind of a hybrid between uh, a public company and a, uh, and a private partnership. And this really shows the, the, the commitment. The team has close to eight, uh, 90 million euros invested in the company, and that really guarantees the incentives being aligned between the team and the client. And of course, with external owners, such as, for example, yourselves. Last five years, if we look at the graphs here, you could maybe assume that the world has been quite calm and, and nice and, and nothing really exciting going on in the world. Uh, surprisingly stable uh, historical development. This is basically just showing the, the execution of our current strategy, which I will describe in more in detail shortly. Uh, as all businesses in this sector, the, the cost level is 
is, is very much fixed, which means that when you generate growth, that is often translated into a, into a certain type of hockey stick in the, in the EBIT and EBITDA rows, which, which, which can be seen here. And I uh, have to mention that, that the last three years, of course, with, with COVID, with uh, uh, Russian uh, aggression, etc., has, has not been normal years. So, so really looking forward to having a, uh, a year with some tailwind as well at some point. What we do is, at the moment, if we look at our top line, basically three areas that generate a big majority of, of our income. Forestry, which we are probably the most well-known for. Uh, real estate, which we are uh, investing in on the Nordic level directly. Uh, and then listed real estate and infrastructure uh, that we're doing through the, the, the public market. Uh, these three are, are the big majority of what we are currently doing, but what I'm very excited about is that, that we are uh, leveraging on this core competence that, that we have in the group and, and moving, for example, in forestry to uh, higher added value areas. So. If we see forest and land as a, as a raw material for, for example, forest fiber, which is an amazing uh, uh, raw material, uh, uh, we can actually, by uh, further uh, utilizing new innovations and technologies, we can be part of uh, solutions to global problems, such as plastics in our oceans. With forest fiber, we can replace more and more plastic solutions in packaging, for example. With forest fiber, we can replace cotton, which is very extremely polluting when you do clothes. With forest fiber, we can replace, for example, in Tesla batteries, you have 100 kilograms of, of uh, graphite, roughly. You can replace uh, with lignin from the trees, you can replace uh, that as a raw material. We are moving from very old school cutting trees, building houses, building furniture type of businesses to, to, to being part of, of the solution to certain of our problems globally. Also, uh, forest is a, an amazing... Uh, uh, or, or the land under the forest is an amazing source of energy. We are currently with, within our new energy fund um, building and developing uh, uh, both wind, solar, and different types of energy uh, store, storing uh, solutions. So basically, leaning towards the forest uh, in f and, and looking at it from a pri private equity innovation, higher added value point of view, and also traditionally utilizing the, the control of the land and, and what it means uh, in order to, to uh, build and develop uh, renewable energy faster. Uh, and with less uh, hassle than if you don't control the ownership of the land. And we're very excited about this. A couple of words about uh, our current strategy, which has been, uh, as long as I has, have been a CEO, it has been roughly the same. We have updated it slightly a couple of years back. But basically, it consists of seven uh, components. First of all, key to all success is, of course, that you generate added value to your client. Your client is, is happy, your client is, gets wealthier, and, and uh, that you exceed client's expectations. That's very important for us. In order to do that, you need to have unique competence, unique products, both, and unique team, unique competence. We are focused in, on real assets, which is forest real estate, and, and then energy and uh, forest-related private equity. This is a very unique offering, both when you look at the Nordics and if you look broader in, in, in Europe. I'll come back to uh, sustainability shortly. Uh, technology, of course, is, is key to any business, both externally towards clients and internally to, to deliver 
uh, efficiency and inc increase that. And we have been working a lot on on uh, uh, both simpli simplifying processes uh, and and streamlining the organization and, and focusing on on the core we we believe that will be a bigger and bigger portion of of our business that is the alternative space we're working in uh, growth is key of course uh, it's a scalable business but but on the other hand uh, uh, you need to stay far away from the rising uh, cost barrier that is very much it can be related to regulation it can be related to uh, esg it can be uh, related to technology the ones who grow will have the economic means to serve their clients better to generate better returns and to invest in the team uh, growth will take place uh, organically and by mta we have we have a history of doing uh, quite regular uh, transactions, purchases. Now we have not do done that for a couple of years, but we are still very much looking for alternatives that would enhance our, our uh, uh, growth and or enhance our com competence within chosen strategic areas. Uh, last but not least, uh, scalability so we invest only in scalable solutions and that is funds that is mandates everything else is non-core and 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 uh, the percentage of our business coming from uh, scalable solutions has never been uh, higher than it is currently and it most likely will continue to grow as as a portion of, of the business Then uh, coming back to the middle, middle one in uh, uh, in our strategy, sustainability responsibility. We're very happy about uh, our company being being now for the second uh, year in a row uh, uh, among the most inspiring workplaces in Finland. Uh, very happy about that. The team is is. Uh, uh, has rated us as an employer even higher than last year, uh, which is which is uh, remarkable, especially when when we are living in times of war and and uh, economic uncertainty, etc. Very happy about that. We are of course uh, focusing a lot on on being transparent as as being a main listed uh, company that is of course uh, licensed to operate type of type of issue, but mainly I mean our, our biggest uh, effect the, is of course via our investments. So as a small 200-person company, the fact that we we maneuver and, and uh, manage 4.6 billion uh, euros within areas such as forestry, uh, forest innovations, energy, etc. Uh, not not to forget real estate. Uh, it gives us a huge leverage in being part of changing and making the world a better place. And and. Uh, uh, that is something we're very happy about. Financial objectives, uh, we have two of them. Uh, to double our size in five years and to deliver a, a 40 plus percent uh, operating profits level. The latter one we are quite close to uh, historically and the, of course the first one will be a combination of 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 MTA and uh, uh, organic uh, growth. Most likely, we're not going to continue to purchase traditional asset managers being uh, invested in in uh, or having a big exposure in equities and debt traditional asset classes like we have done historically. Most likely, we're going to look at at, at uh, uh, targets closer to our core core businesses or new core businesses uh, leaning on the competence we have in in house we have uh, been a uh, uh, Sauli mentioned here in the beginning that that uh, 
the Helsinki Stock, Stock Exchange has a lot of, of uh, great dividend play, uh, payers. We, we have been uh, among the leading ones here as well. Uh, quite, quite a st stable development here. Our new dividend policy is to pay out 70% uh, or more uh, uh, of the uh, earnings per share or, or the cash flow per share. Uh, historically, we have uh, usually been more generous than that. Looking forward, where are we going? What, what are we going to do? Uh, our home markets are Finland and Sweden. In Finland, we have, among institutions, a decent market share. In Sweden, we have a growing market share. Uh, on the high net side, we have a, a, a footprint, a long long-lasting footprint in Finland, but it's clear that when we are working in quite niche areas, uh, uh, the most logical uh, way to grow significantly in size is, is to go to markets where institutions, for example, have very low uh, weights in, in uh, forestry or forestry-related private equity, for example. And that is uh, our first step is, is Central Europe, where we are actively fundraising, both to, to our private equity fund and to, to our forest, uh, new forest fund. So to simplify, we, we want to do uh, less different things. We want to focus even f more and further from, from what, where we have been historically. And uh, 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 do it in a bigger scale than than before, and and therefore uh, European expansion, but keeping the focus on private assets, alternatives such as real assets, forest, real estate, listed real estate and infrastructure. This is. The direction we are heading, we are, uh, you could say that, that from looking five years back, the last five years we have still been, so to say, turning turning the ship to onto the new course, and now we we are on the course. So now it's actually just to to put some more RPMs to the engines and get the ship to move move faster uh, to the cho chosen direction. Very exciting times ahead. Uh, would love to have you either as investor in the stock or as a client or both uh, to share the journey going forward. We're going to report on the 16th of February, so we're soon into to our, our silent period. But if there is any investor relations related questions, uh, myself, uh, our C, uh, CEO Inka Norama and our Investor Relations Manager Mario Ostrom are very happy to answer to any questions. Thank you, Indres, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Please, have a seat. Thank you. <coughs> yes, so let's start with the market-related themes. So we have had kind of drastic change in the interest rate out outlook and the how, how fast the yields have actually ri risen. So ha have you made or do you see any need to make any adjustment for your tra strategy when we are now exited from the zero interest rate environment? No, I, as, I, as I mentioned already, the, the weight among uh, institutional investors in Europe, for example, in, in forestry related is so low that, that we, we see room to grow uh, as these asset classes are, are part of a diversified portfolio, no matter if, if the interest rate is six or, or two. Then, of course, now we are in a situation where the, uh, uh, the yields are possibly uh, coming down. Uh, what are the real uh, interest rates going to be going forward? Uh, that's another question, because even I've been I've been in discussions with with uh, professional investors that that uh, uh, still uh, were mixing real and and uh, uh, normal interest rate. So so nominal. 
So basically, even though the credit is more relevant asset class, again, you are not more more keen to 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 try to attract more credit capital under you. You focus we, on the privates. We've seen growth uh, on the interest uh, side as well, yeah. but it's it's a very small part of our business. Our focus is clear. Uh, the uh, both when when you are talking about uh, uh, pure equity risk and and bond risk, uh, that is not where where our our growth will come from. Yeah. It's more these yeah. these are actually probably our forest. It, I, the <laughs> tree looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, do you actually see that you would be better off in the zero interest rate environment, considering then the alternatives would be more like the only game in town? When now we are in the environment where actually credit is viable option again for your clients. I don't, I don't see it as a very healthy environment to be in. Let's say what has shocked many has been the speed of of uh, of first the inflation and then the, the the interest rate hikes. Any environment that is more predictable is, I, I think, better than than these uh, shocks. Yeah. Uh, then uh, about the forest funds, uh, your funds target the steady four to six percent annual 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 yield. Uh, uh, is that attractive enough in this environment where we can actually earn decent returns on the credit credit side, or well, how, we, how your cl clients see this? We, it depends on on uh, uh, if you're looking at the real uh, interest rate or or uh, uh, absolute, mm. yeah, nominal, yeah, uh, because uh, six percent uh, real interest rate is quite good. Of course, that is not a typical forestry uh, return. But but uh, uh, as part of a diversified portfolio, you should have both, not yeah. either or. Yeah. And and most investors have very low uh, weight in forestry. Uh, in Finland, uh, the weight is is uh, reasonable, but the further away from here you go, the for natural reasons, the the lower the the average weight is. Uh, the forest funds have post continue post excellent returns during the past two years during the bear market and the yield yield rise rise although mo most of the other real assets have basically come come down kind of for example real estate they have come down a lot so what why haven't the forest related asset come down more uh, of course uh uh, you you have seen a slightly uh, rising yields there but the main main reason is is that uh, the war that that uh, uh, Ru russia activated and in initiated uh, has has decreased the the, the uh, import of timber radically to the european union so the timber prices are are uh, uh, they have come very little down and then of course will the forest return uh, be as strong as they have been the couple, uh, the last two years? Probably not, because they have been boosted also by inflation. The inflation hedge in forestry works much better than in in real estate. So, so uh, the historical returns have been slightly too high, but but there is uh, reason to believe that that uh, the timber prices are not uh, not in any any type of a, a bubble, and the more we can utilize uh, forest uh, fiber uh, to to generate uh, more added value uh, um, products. Uh, the more valuable, of course, the raw material will be. At the moment, half of the biomass is burnt, which is the lowest added value use you can have. Yeah. So any use better than that will naturally make the raw material over time uh, more interesting. Uh, looking at the real estate market, uh, we have had kind of a lot of discussion even in media in Finland about the open end funds on the real estate, and there has been, well, many of the funds have been in trouble when they are not being able able to pay out the the redemptions what the investors have made. So, uh, what is the situation in your open end funds? You have two major open end funds in the real estate space. Yes, we have a Nordic one and a, and a Finnish one. Uh, Returns have been uh, flattish this year, uh, and some redemptions, but we are talking a couple of percentage of, of the total AUM. So, so far, very little activity there. But of course, uh, the market is uncertain. Uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, we are most likely going to see 
uh, decreasing uh, interest rates, which which would or uh, it could it could mean that actually uh, the coming 12 to 18 months is 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 actually when you should buy and not sell real estate, especially if you have uh, technical sellers that for one reason or another have to exit. We have leveraged uh, uh, players on the market, especially in Sweden, but also in Finland. There can be special situations. I've, I've har it's hard for me to see that that we would be very much lower two years from now on the on the uh, on the market. But then before that, there can be a very interesting uh, buying opportunity. So who who will have the muscle, uh, the liquidity and and the um, uh, Dry powder, yeah, who, who, the dry, dry powder when it, when uh, the, the best opportunities materialize. I mean, most of the the concern has been around housing funds. And no, yeah. Now the question is, are we are we getting also nervous on 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 commercial uh, funds or uh, commercial real estate or 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 care or whatever? Yeah. But but housing has been where 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 the uh, investors uh, have been the most nervous on yes. the on the Finnish market. Yes. Uh, then uh, about on your growth path, uh, you are currently ramping several different funds. Although, as as we already discussed on, on, on with with Capman, Capman previously, that the fundraising market is really tough at the moment. And the private asset asset side, obviously, due to the fact that there is a bottlenecks there. So, um, what gives you the confidence that you are able to raise all the, all the capital on on the sever in several funds during this very difficult period? Or at least normalized, more normalized period, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's of course not going to be easy. You, you need uh, a brilliant team, and then you you need a lot of lot of of uh, client meetings. Uh, it's it's not easy. It, it's hard work. Uh, most likely, uh, I mean, looking at our uh, net subscriptions this year, the uh, 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 the biggest contribute the positive contributions have been in in. Uh, uh, forestry and uh, and now this energy and and the forest uh, private equity most likely these three are going to continue to be the ones where that attract capital uh, and then the real estate side due to the uh, quite sour sentiment is is, is probably going to be less uh, less of an attractive even though it it could be that you should actually now now be moving to the buy side uh what do you feel is what, what do you feel is the bottleneck at the private asset side? Is it more more of the like the over allocations of the of the investors, or is it is it more more just the uncertainty relating to the you know where the yields are and what happens to the economy, etc.? Or is it is it both or something else? If if you talk about institutionals, uh, my view is 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 there uh, there we are. It's an allocation question, whereas on the on the private side, it's, it's more of a sentiment question. How do you feel? Institutions are uh, understand the, the uh, what what is the inbound or inbuilt upside in in these over time. So, so for them it's a more of an uh, allocation question. And is capital freed from from uh, from uh, other sources at which, uh, which pace etc. Uh, uh, Pia mentioned uh, uh, transactions being slower. Yeah. That that is what what will then. It will, I agree wheel, that that will help us moving forward when, if and when it starts again, the machine. Yeah. Uh, your core growth target, the 10 billion AUM, it's, it's well, it's, it's ambitious one. You, you, <laughs> you say at least. So uh, how much M&A is built on that, in, inside of that? Or can you well, reach it without M&A? We have not uh, public, publicly uh, opened any figures, but let's say... Uh, uh more than half uh can be organic so it's not like the majority would need to be yeah. mta based yeah. but that that that's the ballpark but then that basically implies that you are op open on mda and i think on the recent am watch interview also mentioned that you you are more open to mda than maybe, that, that, maybe that, be, that's correct yes maybe before because can you open up your stand more of your stance on mda like what are you more actively looking or previously i guess you more maybe be kind of a passive mode that you are willing to talk but not maybe initiate the conversations so yeah i mean we 
previously we have uh, via MTA entered the forest business. We have entered the uh, the listed real estate and infra business, uh, uh, whereas the physical uh, uh, real estate and and the energy uh, and the forest related private equity have been organic projects. So we have actually done both. But in addition to these. Uh, we have also been purchasing like generalist asset managers to get critical mass, which we then have transformed into our models and our way, way of of of, uh, of uh, working. Now, go, going forward, I would say the uh, we will be much more critical on whether the target really helps us uh, grow in the selected uh, focus areas, and or if it brings some really. Uh, exciting interesting and 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 um, um, highly potential new competence to the to the group so so that we would go and buy like uh, equity debt fund management companies for example in the nordics uh, unlikely unlikely uh, then of course we come back to uh, the culture and uh, and values need to be there the price needs to be there, yeah. and and the uh, brand uh, has to be uh, perceived positively. We can't take any brand risk. So quality, price, and values. In addition to that, so very easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah sound, sounds easy. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Nordic th Nordic there. Uh, would would the logical place to find? That kind of target be in the Nordic scope, or is it is it in the Finnish market? So basically, Finnish market there is, or just a handful of players, and everybody knows each no. other. Basically, we are in a small market in that sense. Yeah, I guess everybody has on the Finnish market each other's numbers. So <laughs> that, that's not, uh, uh, and and time will tell. But but yeah, I mean, as we want to grow in Central Europe and and broaden uh, also our, our client base in the Nordics from Finland and Sweden to to Norway more Norway Denmark something that would help us on this task is is more likely than than us uh, or us uh, buying or merging with with local players uh, finally on the M M &A, uh would you be I willing to consider an option that that the United Bankers will actually be the smaller Play, player on the on the transaction, so you would be kind of a backseat, and somebody else would be driving that that mobile on field. Or, or do you want to? Yeah, would you want to be the be yeah, the be the driver yeah. in that sense? I mean, so far we have wanted to be the driver, but of in the end, it's a it's a question of money. Yeah, yeah, and the stock exchange is open five five days a week, typically. Yeah, thank you, Patrick, very much. Thank you, sir. Questions. And now next we have Sampo, and please, Sami, go ahead. <laughs> 